2013, Diagonal Press is a research-based small press located on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. Founded by artist Tauba Auerbach, the press states its objectives are, among other things, to make art in the form of publications and to operate with autonomy and integrity. Tauba is coming to us from their studio slash the Diagonal Press HQ on Forsyth Street. <laughs> We're so thrilled to have you today. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you hanging in there? I'm materially fine, but this year and a half has been so challenging in the head yeah. and in the heart. First official question. Okay. Okay. To create something as special as Diagonal Press, there must have been a book that moved you from a formative age, something that made you start thinking about how books can be a medium for artistic production. Would you feel comfortable sharing uh, what that was with us? I mean, as a really little kid, my folks both worked full time and they had their own business. So like that meant like really long hours a lot. Yeah. And so I just spent a lot of time amusing myself at their office, which I was perfectly happy to do, but I would just like amuse myself in the office supply clo closet. Yeah. <laughs> and I made a lot of books and a lot of like wallets with fake credit cards and things at the time, like um, things that required lettering. I've always been pretty preoccupied with my handwriting. Yeah, I just love seeing people's hands and like they're kind of involuntary gesture. But I also change it up and I've always had like different fonts for my handwriting and I like to italicize things backwards and forwards and um, I really don't like using lowercase though. That's something I typically don't do. Yeah, as a kid, I was just making all kinds of drawings and then sticking them together into little books. And then my dad at one point taught me how to like sew a proper binding and make a hardcover book. How did he know how to do that? I don't know. He just kind of knows how to make like anything. Like you, yeah. The man can just build and he has a lot of tools through some really interesting channels. Like he, um, he's part of a community of people who worked on old race cars before they were like an expensive thing. You know, he, he found uh, bits of a car under a chicken coop in, I want to say like Sonoma at one point, and he put it back together. What? Raced it for years. Yeah, with just oh other God. like, what? other kind of engineer, engineer, uh, tinkerer, Tinker. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's beautiful. So I don't know. My dad can make anything and he somehow knew how to he can bind a book. Bind a book. Yeah. The he man so, can bind so book. well. <laughs> he sewed all these crazy Halloween costumes for me as a kid. Oh, um, what were you? Sorry, the best <laughs> the best one was a sneech. You know, that's Dr. Seuss book. The sneeches, like this some of them have stars on their bellies and some of them don't. And then like in terms of seeing books as artwork, going to Amsterdam and happening upon the bookstore Bookie Wookie was really mm -hmm. transformative for me. And I, yeah, that was the first time I bought a book that was an artwork that like registered to me as a piece of art. I think that um, some books that I made right before starting Diagonal Press that I kind of consider failures right. are also a big reason that the project exists. And the things that I considered failures about them were basically their inaccessibility, not just in that they were very expensive. All of these books were um, bound in a, like a very difficult way by this brilliant, uh, wonderful bookbinder named Daniel Kelm, who's a good friend of mine now. And then, and then after he bound them in this difficult way, I hand painted the edges of them. Mm -hmm. And they were in small editions and they were so delicate and so fragile that like you can't handle them. You look at them right. and it And so I just felt like I made a book shaped sculpture here. I didn't really make a book mm. in what I want a book to be. So, right. um, so yeah, I've been hoping to make books that people are really comfortable like throwing in their bag. Well, not all of the diagonal books, but I want to have a range. You know, there's some that are like, yeah. you might treat like an like an art object and hopefully it's not so expensive that no one can buy this yeah um, and then there are books that yes you should feel free to throw in your bag because it's 
not it's not precious in that particular way it can be precious for other reasons like it's right yeah totally let's talk a little bit about we talked about the books that but you also print posters mm -hmm. and different and different um um pins wearables. socks and bandanas i call yeah. it marg marginalia the map projection posters listed as time and space on the diagonal press website were made with a special computer software which flattens the earth from any angle at first i thought this was a a joke on flat earthers obviously <laughs> but then i realized it was a statement on climate change and the state of our oceans could you talk a little bit about these pieces? Yeah. Would you like absolutely. to? Tell, yeah, tell happily. I mean, I want to like very clearly say that I'm not a flat earther, <laughs> but, um, you know, we're looking, we look at the earth flattened every right. day. Yeah. <laughs> and when you flatten a sphere, you must make a compromise, like just geometrically, it's not possible to um, preserve the integrity of the shape of things, the scale of things, the mm -hmm. direction or angle of things all simultaneously. You just, you have to choose. So the cartographer is choosing based on their subjective mm -hmm. history, position, interests, biases, prejudices, whatever they might be. And, and you also have to slice the earth somewhere in order to like- Right open it up and where right. you put that slice really says a lot too mm -hmm. there are just decisions along the way with yeah any kind of like visually representing data but this one is like especially impactful of course and um and how usually, that's also shaped our worldview and navigation and travel routes yeah historically speaking I mean, just what's considered empty space has been determined by the people drawing maps a lot of times. And right. very often that is not where the value space. lies. Yeah, yeah, there are humans there. Yeah. Um, and things are pushed to the margins and stretched out weirdly um, parts of the world that don't, that matter less to the person drawing that map. And right. I wanted to like un learn my habituated way of seeing it I've, I've lived with these quote unquote upside down maps for quite a long time mm -hmm. but it wasn't until this year that i i wanted to and like the pandemic being confined to one space but sharing this global experience yeah think about the globe in this new way and i'm looking for software and i also like reached out to um a couple of map librarians that i know and sort of reading about like counter mapping and I wanted to find a different way to like project and unpeel, like slice and unpeel this um, mm -hmm. this surface. And so this great programmer, Jason Davies in the UK, who I just like cold emailed, mm -hmm. <laughs> and wrote a piece of software for me uh, that allows me to make these projections that are like can rotate omnidirectionally and. Um, I basically can make these maps that wouldn't really be very valuable to most people making maps. Um, and they seem confusing and they seem distorted, but they're absolutely no more distorted than any other projection. So they're all crazy, mathematically yeah. true. This one uh, geophysicist and um, oceanographer named Athelstan Spillhouse, who I came across in my research, and something that he really impressed upon me in his map making was um the arbitrariness of the, the slicing and like where mm -hmm. we cut and what ends up at this like square edge or rectangular edge of the map maps we're used to seeing and he was slicing along natural boundaries like coastlines or tectonic plate edges mm -hmm. and so the ones that i ended up making were uh focused on keeping the oceans intact as like one con contiguous body of water and then mm -hmm. pushing uh north america and western europe to the periphery because mm -hmm. it never is so right yeah those pieces are are amazing i love the they almost look like my shirt here oh yeah they have a fluorescent green the ocean is fluorescent green and all of them yeah <laughs> okay kind of toxic but kind of alive um and yeah. i should also say that like the um the the maps for diagonal press also correspond to paintings there's like a hand painted version of uh, four of the existing diagonal 
and maps and there will be more yeah. and painted ones too. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I love those pieces. They're so amazing. Many of the books you've published like Saccad 3 have a clear scientific influence, but I feel there's a certain cinematic influence as well. Is cinema something you think about when producing these pieces? Much of the aesthetic reminds me of early video works. It's a really good observation because they're like literally made with video transitions. So mm -hmm. the saccade books, which are saccade is the um, type of eye movement where you right. your eyes dart from one focal point to another focal right. point and mm -hmm. you don't register the transition between the two. So I was trying to take these two discrete images and then make different kinds of video transitions between the two and output each one. Um, each frame to a page and then the book is just that transition really stretched out wow and i used that technique in a, like one of the book sculptures <laughs> um this rgb color space atlas book and also if i've made two videos they're both called pilot wave induction and then there's a, a number right um pilot wave induction two is a book so one and three are videos but two is a book and I wanted to title it that way. It's a diagonal press book so that it's like meant as to be as, as substantial a character in this series as the two videos. Mm -hmm. um, but those, that is also output um, from the making of Pilot of the video. Yeah. Yeah. All editions of diagonal press, they are not numbered or signed. Could you talk a little bit um, to us about that decision? Because, you know, as a small press, um, this is a very unique decision. I felt myself having yeah. like, a, like a cranky, pissed reaction about just how the business of art functions and yeah. um, how arbitrary and weird and valuation is mm -hmm. uh, and certain things about it that I just like don't really agree with. But also just some experiences that I personally was having, paintings of mine that I had donated to auctions for to benefit someone's like medical bills then showing up at auction from that collector and that person making loads and loads of money off of that and oh it was just happening God. to me over and over and over and I felt like there were all these times where I was like trying either like trying to keep prices low to express some kind of like value of not being greedy and or giving stuff away instead of <laughs> spiraling Instead into like a up. negative yeah. right. thing about it or or having like a like I don't know just like taking an angry posture I just wanted to like take this uh, do this other thing like channel that over here somewhere and yeah. try something that felt like maybe it could be structurally different I still don't know you know things about it some things about it work and some things don't one thing that has worked I sit at my table at the New York Art Book Fair, for example, and um, the first year that I was there, a lot of people came to the table, they'd ask me to sign something or they'd ask the edition size. Often people didn't know it was the person who made the books that was there. Um, <laughs> but, um, and then when I explain like, for this press, nothing will be signed or numbered. So for first, sure. People, people didn't like this though. Like, People came to the table and I'd explain it, and a lot of people walked away. And I felt like, good, what am I? Yeah, goodbye. I'm not, not getting up in the morning for you. I'm not making no. this for you. And you wouldn't care about it anyway. You were going to yeah. turn and sell it. So just, you I set your good. boundary in a way, right? You set your boundary and you found your people. You put it out there in the world in a way that you um, were able to still make what you wanted to make but you have disenfranchised these fucking assholes who won't who would just walk away from your table if you refuse to sign it because your signature is what they think makes it valuable which is just good for you it's like so good for you. i just feel like there's such a um I really like straightforwardness in mm -hmm. exchange, if at all possible. It's not always easy. Like being straightforward between people can be really challenging, but it's like ultimately always kind of better. And yeah, one of the things I don't like about 
any economy is like the lack of straightforwardness. I love bartering for things and I do it as much as possible because that feels like very direct and like uncomplicated in a lot of ways. Right. Um, so I feel like I've achieved some greater straightforwardness in this particular project mm -hmm. that makes me happy. And I also feel like I've been brought closer to my audience and the people that I feel like I make work for every day. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I can I, fully understand what you're saying. Yeah, I think Diagonal Press has definitely achieved that. I mean, the thing that's so amazing that you've been able to do and Diagonal Press does is that work at a high level, but also still give accessibility, still do the work and the research and keep things interesting and still have an ongoing conversation with how to rearrange these structures that are in place now that are so unfair to the artists our, art, our artists deserve better i think so i think like i think art itself deserves better too it does like as, uh, right but i also feel like I, I can't deny that part of the reason the press even has like any momentum is because i also had some recognition in this other channel or other lane of the art world so but I, I have to say it's sort of like an ongoing negotiation with myself I feel like this will never be perfectly resolved like partly because yeah. just because we live in capitalism <laughs> there are things that remain um like open questions to me about the press and things that I feel like fail in small ways about it for sure the point of this project for me is to be like constantly making these negotiations and um adjustments and and to investigations like, yeah and to be like very transparent about it that that's like the spirit of the whole thing and one of the things in the mission statement is to not confuse integrity with rigidity because i feel like that's a mistake like i think integrity means being willing to change your mind it means being, mm -hmm. being, being willing to to adjust and like take in new information or and there was a quote that um I read recently it was be tolerant with others and strict with yourself. So I, I don't mm, know, just it kind of sounded like, yeah, just yeah. the way you were kind of like framing things was like, kind of sounds a little bit like that. But I see what you mean. Tolerant of others and strict with yourself. I'm going to be tolerant with, with others and strict yeah. with yourself. Yeah. yeah. Our 2021 editor in residence, Norcon, is thinking a lot about maintenance this year. The question is, how do artists? sustain an art practice for a long period of time against doubt, loss, and grief. What keeps you and Diagonal Press hopeful and moving forward? I don't know. In five, in, you got five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Being around people who are much younger than me and much older than me, those, like in both directions. Yeah. Um, that keeps me hopeful. And I think that that uh it's like I have Miriam Kaba's voice in my head saying like hope is a discipline and so I've been mm -hmm. thinking about discipline a lot the idea that you could invest in something that like you might not see the results of for a very long time and that that's worth mm -hmm. doing like that yeah. that idea keeps me hopeful could you just tell us really quickly also you know what else you've been working on what you have coming up I had a show Air that was that. supposed to open like like a couple of weeks after the pandemic shutdown happened mm -hmm. and that was a survey show in my hometown museum sf moma so that is going to happen finally this year oh great December. the other like kind of substantial thing i'm working on right now is the series of interviews where i'm asking mostly scientists scientists and craft people and like scholars in about craft uh I'm, I'm asking them questions about the things that generally have just preoccupied me the most for mm -hmm. the last decade or however long, like issues of asymmetry and non-duality and things like that. And it's been so wonderful. Well, to be are you recording these interviews? Are they like Zoom interviews or? Yeah, right now I'm just gathering them and I think mm -hmm. I will probably edit them down into a diagonal press book, but yeah. Um, Honestly, if they just stayed in my computer, <laughs> that would be yeah. okay too. And I, I just am so grateful to have some of these conversations. And um, yeah. but yeah, I record them on Zoom and then we use a like a transcription bot to transcribe it, which always recognizes me as two people. 
And I've gotten to, yeah, it ranges from friends to total strangers. And I'm trying to just like use the word of mouth, like one person leads me to the next person. Well, thank you so much for joining us on thank our you. studio. Even more than patient, more than kind. But You've hopefully been super patient and kind <laughs> to me. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you so much for making these beautiful books and objects that are accessible to everybody. So thank, thank you for that reaching out to me and staying in touch all these years and for just continuing to do great work and teach me about other great artists. I really appreciate it so much.